Every circuit owner lives for the day that they hear this sound at their track. Come rain, come shine, the shrill of a Grand Prix engine is the magic ingredient that brings the punters through the turnstiles. And for the RAC Super Prix, I'm afraid it's initially rain. But laden skies have not dampened the enthusiasm of the hundreds who flock to the County Kildare circuit. The MG Car Club have been entrusted with running the big boss day at Mandelo. Boss standing for big open single seaters. And they're as big as you get in motor racing. Formula One and Formula 3000. Let's meet some of the visitors. My name is Johan Rajamäki, I come from Sweden. I started racing in 1978 with uh, Formula V. Today I'm racing in the Boss Series with a Formula One car. And uh, I also am uh, the lap record holder at Mondello Park. The car I'm racing today is a Footwork Arrows from 92. It's previously driven by Derek Warwick in uh, Grand Prix racing. Uh, at that time they were using a Nugent engine. I had made an installation for a Jad V10 engine, 3.5 litre, and it's having 630 horsepower. I'm Tony Worswick, I'm from Blackburn in England, and uh, I'm racing a Reynard 93D. Um, it's a car that used to be used by a guy called Hideki Noda, and it was run by Tom's, which is the factory Toyota team. And we've had it for the last three years doing the Boss Series. Uh, we won the series in the first year, and we're second last year, but this year hasn't been too kind to us so far, and uh, we've not even got off zero points at the minute, but uh, hope to change that this weekend. My name is Nigel Greensall, uh, I was born in uh, Birmingham in England and my previous racing experience is in Formula 2000, uh, we won the British Championship in 1993 and in the Pro Sport 3000 series which I'm also contesting this season alongside the Boss series. The car I'm driving is the Formula 1 Tyrrell 022 which is the 1994 car that Ukio Katayama raced uh, through the 94 season quite successfully. Also Mark Blundell, uh, they managed a, a third place finish in the Spanish Grand Prix. We're running a, a Judd V10 3.5 litre engine with 650 horsepower. My name's Nigel Worswick, I'm from Blackburn in Lancashire in England and I'm racing a Reynard 90D, it's an ex-Roni uh, Tamburini car which they used in the 90 series of the European Championship. I've done Formula Ford before this and went straight into the Boss series but most of my experience is from rallying and uh, last year we uh, did well enough to finish 11th overall in the RAC, missing out on 10th just by one second. So, uh, and we're, we're joining this with a rally championship, we're lying 5th in the Mintex National Series and just come straight from the Isle of Man last weekend to do this event in Mondello Park. My name's Ron Cumming, I'm from Scotland and uh, I'm driving the Formula One footwork, the Arrows car, um, it's a 92 Grand Prix car, um, very famous car, it was the, the car which Michele Alboreto drove and scored all the championship points uh, for Arrows in 92. Uh, my experience, um, I've been Scottish champion for 10 years in lever cars, open single seaters and GT silhouettes and I've sort of graduated into this boss series which is the ideal series for me. So these are the people who play with Formula One. Now let's meet some of the people whose aspirations are to be in Formula One. Well, Eddie Irvine's got there. Johnny Kane looks as like he's well on his way. And the amazing thing, since the World Championship began in 1950, we've had no less than eight Irish drivers make it to the pinnacle of the sport. Well, here's a man who's going to try and make that rocky road a little bit easier. Oshin O'Brien. Oshin, what is your scheme? The idea behind Champions of Future Ireland is to promote young up-and-coming racing drivers and put them in a better position to turn professional in the sport. Of course, the big problem is the money. Yeah, well, every driver has that problem funding, but we hope by making our drivers more professional and presentable that it'll be easier for them to find funding from companies and get major backing to move, help them move on in their career. We wish you the very best of luck. And you, of course, have picked uh, some very smart men and some very young men. What's your name? Brian King. And Brian, how long have you been racing? 
been racing four years, ever since I was eight. Eight years old, that's amazing. And have you, what is your ambition? My ambition is to make my way up through the formulas and be successful in all of them and hopefully at the end of it get to Formula 1. You don't want to be a doctor or a brain surgeon or anything like that? No, Formula 1 has always been my main ambition. And what are you racing at the moment? I'm racing in a, in a junior Yamaha class which I compete in over in England. We wish you the very best of luck. Here's two men who have come out of karting, Barry and John, and they're now in Formula V and uh, deadly rivals I would imagine. We are indeed. It's been a tough season throughout the year, but uh, really it's only just begun. Um, the first two season races for me actually have gone, they weren't, haven't gone exactly to plan, but it's looking up. I'm joined with Paul Conroy now, so things are looking up for the better, I hope. Right, so he's a friend and a rival, is he? That's right, yeah. How's your season been so far? Well, we started off the season in a brand new car and we've had a few little small teething problems, but now we're starting to get on top of them now and the car has become very competitive at the moment. So the first season out of carts for these two, and here's another two gentlemen who are the first season out of carts, and they've gone the Formula Ford route, and Mr. Cohan is all the way from Clannacilty, and you've had two wins already. Yes, um, won two in Mandela, and the, won the first one, first race I've started, or the <laughs> first race at the start of the year, and I won the second last one at Mandela. Now, is your ambition to go right to the top? Well, it's like every racing driver, I would like to make Formula One. It's, just, it's every racing driver's ambition. So. And I suppose one fellow that will almost be trying to stop you because it's deadly rivalry game and you are exactly the same. You've come out of karting and you've already also had two wins. That's right. I've uh, won the first round of the championship in Kirkuston and the third one here in Mondello. Um, we had problems in the second race, but uh, it's going well. It's going to be a close race, I think, um, close championship between my, me and Michael this year. Um, should be good. Well, judging by the results so far, it looks like uh, there's been a very good choice of initial drivers. And of course, all their ambitions is Formula One. And what have we got here? A real, genuine Formula One car. And who knows, one day, one of these men may be popped into it. Despite the atrocious practice conditions, it's still two Grand Prix cars on the staggered front row in Saturday's official session. All three Formula One cars have been under the lap record of 50.72, 81.62 miles an hour, and Nigel Greensall has been quickest of them all in the recent Tyrrell. And it's the Mandela lap record holder who is on pole position, or it should be on the side of pole position, Johan Ryamaki. And believe it or not, Greensall was in the 49s on Saturday. Just think about that. A mile and a quarter around these tight Mondello corners in 49 seconds. Vivian Daly there in the second of the Opel Lotus cars, along with Jonathan Files. He makes up that row. Then we go back to Dundee Motors. That's Ken Dundee, and yet another of an Opel-based car, but he's got a set of big carburetors on it which makes him go very quick. Number 24 there is Matthew Mortlock from Cambridgeshire in his Reynard. Then we have a man who had all sorts of trouble. Ron Cummings, you saw him spinning there during the interviews, but he's also got a major problem with his back, hurting badly, but watch for him coming up the grid. Then it's Maben, then we go on down the grid again to number 30, and that's Nigel Cresswell from England in a Reynard with a Mugen Honda V8. Then we have an interesting car. This is a Formula 3 car, an Atlantic car from going way back. It is Dan Daly in a rout. And what is this we have here? Number 66, Peter Carville from Dundonald in a Mondial and an RPM sticker. And there and away we go. And just look at the start he gets. This man, Nigel Greensall, I think he's the only one actually saw the flag drop into the very slippy first corner, a little bit wide. He gets it on the grass and he's made a mess of it, Alan. Oh dear, and Tony Warswick going into the lead, but Greensall, who had been so very, very quick, as you said, Brian, in Friday practice, really we were hoping for a new lap record from this man, and he's stuck steadfast on the grass. But out front, it's Warswick, and there's la the current lap record holder, that's a Johan uh, Rajamaki, who is in second place there, and then the Irish contingent on their tail. What a moment of glory for those two. Well, it is a moment of glory, but remember, this morning's practice was very, very wet, very wet indeed. Now we've got a dry line, still got a few damp spots, 
which will catch one or two of these drivers out. But you can see in the background already, Cummings, number nine, the other footwork already up the inside. Oh, brave Jonathan Files hanging off there and trying to keep a Formula One car at bay. But did he lose out there to Vivian Daly? No, he did not. So already up from the fifth row is Cummings into third place. Ryan Mackey there in second place. Warswick in first man. And we still are pole position man. Remember, he spun it off in the first lap. He is now a lap down. Can he do anything about it? And look, having a look down the inside Cummings. Now, this is no place. And will he get away with it? He does something we saw the great late Ayrton Senna do. Drive around the outside of that double apex. Very brave in one of these cars. What glorious moments these are at Mandela. Mandela looks very, very small when you've got machinery like this, but look, Cummings. Cummings goes for the lead. So he's come from what the third or fourth row right into the lead. And hopefully Greensall is going to get a push and get going. Still, we hope for a lap record here this afternoon at Mandela. But Cummings is the hot man at the moment. And you can see Tony Warswick there not letting him away with it. And our third place man, the winner from last year, Johan Raya Mackin. The spark just shows you how low these cars are set up. Now remember, these tyres will still be warming, although they have the tyre warmers on, because of these cold, damp conditions, they'll need to get a little bit of heat into these tyres. And the man we've got to watch for, let's hope the marshals got him going that time, was our pole position man, Greensall, who I said in the 49s on Saturday here in the unofficial time uh, session for these Formula 1 cars. This is the battle as we're watching at the moment. Vivian Daly now is the battle for fourth. And we can see there at number 24 beginning to move Mortlock, taking his time to get by Vivian. Is that Ronnie Mabin? It is Alan. That's the man who currently leads the Dunlop Hill Climb Championship, but he's not climbing any hills today. Uh, and he'd be very disappointed. He ran very well in this race last year, and he's not doing his nose cone any good there at all. Number 71, Ronnie Maven then in the Delta with a Vauxhall engine. And there we have Greensall just going through picture. Now that's interesting. We'll put the clocks on him, but here's the leader. And Alita going through, and just at the head of Greensall there was Ken Dundee in the modified uh, Opel, Formula Opel car. Now let's hope everybody's watching their mirrors. Vivian Daly in the Abracababra uh, 2FM car, still heading for the pits, I was going to say, still following Jonathan Files. Maybe he's got tired. It's a long way there. He's had a long, hard day with two races to go. And again, look at Cummins. He's just putting the nose in and the fist in the air. As it going in there, well, like again, they've got to watch the winners. The speed difference between the Formula cars, the Opals, and the uh, the Ralts and the Deltas is considerable. And you've got to remember that we're watching the Formula One car in just eight laps. Lap the very fastest of the Formula Opal machinery. He's not happy here at all. He's been held up badly, and that could almost be Michele Alboreto in there, even the helmet's similar. Just needs a blaze of yellow on the top, Brian. Well, Cresswell there, driving the inside to get around daily. I don't think he even looked in his mirror, realising that Cummins other was ready on top of him to lap him, but he's an experienced driver, he should know. And again, Dundee just nipping inside daily there. But here's their leader, we're on lap 11 as he comes up the hill. Everything beginning to really be warm, and we can tell you that Greensall is really flying. He's still a lap in the rears, unfortunately, but he is motoring on and, believe it or not, getting close to that lap record, even in these conditions. That's the second war, so that's Nigel War. So he's had a rotten weekend here at Mandela. He's had mechanical problems and he's right down the field at the moment. He'd started very late in this race. Rather confusing, the two yellow Reynards. But here's the man out of the lead. Ron Cunnings in considerable pain, Brian, because he's been suffering from back trouble all weekend. In fact, didn't take part in the dry practice on Saturday afternoon. But here's the quick man. We've got the watchers on him. He's right down on the lap record at the moment. Yes, really pushing on his 13th, coming up to his 14th lap. Can he do anything about it? This is halfway roughly through the situation, but you can see that there is that dry line, a few little damp patches. But as Alan was saying, this man in considerable pain, but a, a sturdy wee Scott that doesn't no holds barred, just barges his way through into first place. Remember, he started on the fifth row of the grid, and he's up there leading it at the moment, and he'll be smiling. He'll forget all the pain if he wins this one, but he's still leading out there. It's still the battle behind them between Warswick and Ryan Mackey, and those two will be contending that 
that as they get in back down towards the start finish again and they are yes it is Ryan Mackey gets in but just drives on that bit of it too much to let it slide on through and Worswick back into second again. We have to say a great drive by Tony Worswick that's a Formula 3000 car with the Cosworth V8 engine virtually Formula 1 power in it but he's got 650 brake horsepower behind him trying to be tamed on this damp circuit and Ryan Mackey trying to go around the outside there's not a lot of room there there's not a lot of room anywhere at Mandela when you've got a car this big these are very brave men they're very big cars and you can get away with that in some of the smaller saloons and smaller form but look in the background dive in the inside remember the gentleman in the white car again trying to get that inside line but words we just having none of it. he was our winner last year drove an absolutely brilliant race lost out again with that manoeuvre once you commit yourself to the inside line and don't get away with it then you lose a couple of car lengths so he's got it all to do again perhaps he take a lap or so to catch up on Worswick you can see Worswick was really trying there he was locking a wheel as he came down into uh, Coca-Cola that time out into the country again this uh, one of the fastest parts of the circuit once again the F1 car just closes in slightly but it's very slippery down there and you've got to just feather on the power we've seen once or twice during the weekend they've put too much power down and the car just snaps sideways on them I think Ryan Mackey's on actual good years, so there's a little battle of uh, tires here. Avon back in this big, he's trying down the outside with a wheel in the grass, and he gets away with it. I'm very close, and you see he caught, just caught the end plate on Cummins' wing there as they motored out. That's how close, and he's lost the whole end of the wing, so will that affect it? Lap 23, two to go, and look at Green. And the news is through, Brian. We have a new lap record, a new outright lap record. Absolutely brilliant, 50.22, and it goes to this man in the tip. And 50.22, not the quickest lap he's done around here, but in these conditions, it must be the most bravest lap ever in Mondello. If you look back down the track, you'll see those little damp patches, and he's had to move on to them once or twice with all 650 brake horsepower. One brave gentleman. Two brave gentlemen. Look at this man. He's now got a really commanding lead. He's over a lap ahead of uh, the third place man, or fourth place man, I should say, the new lap record holder, Nigel Greensaw. And fabulous to see these Formula One cars. They're uh, 1992 and 1994 cars, so they're all fairly recent and really superb sight around Mandela. This is the Boss Formula, the Boss Series, that is uh, purely amateur drivers. Costs a lot of money for these men to put these machines on the track, but boy, do we appreciate it. Yes, the 92 car coming up there is the footwork, as he said, that Alberto drove to great success. Slight change of engine, a Judd engine, he comes down, getting his checkered flag, a win for Cummins, superb drive from that fifth row position. There you see it now. We have Cummins from Ryan Mackey, Anthony Warswick, Nigel Greensall, and then Matthew Morthlock. So Ron Cummings is congratulated by his colleagues and presented with the RAC Trophy by Alan Dukes TD. It's been a truly courageous drive as Ron has been in severe pain throughout the weekend. And let's not forget the Irish winners, Jonathan Files, Ronnie Mabin and Ken Dundee. I'm glad everything worked out for us. The team that I have, I mean, they worked really hard and uh, the sponsors, RAC Island, I think they did a great job. I mean, I really appreciate them bringing me here because without them I couldn't do it. Ron the winner and Nigel takes the biggest trophy and check for the new lap record of 50.22 seconds, recorded on the 14th lap.